Hope New Beginning Church and to our online family and friends, we want to thank you so much for joining us for Bible study on tonight. Our uh, scripture will come from Luke 2, verses 8 through 14. Luke 2, 8 through 14. And it says, Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. You know, this is great news. The angel brought us some great news for all people. The angel announced to us, that a child will be born in the city of David. And his name is Jesus. Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful child. Jesus. Jesus. So holy, meek, and mild. New life, new hope to all he brings. Listen to the angels sing. Glory. we call upon you. Lord, we thank you for another privilege, another honor, another great opportunity to hear from you. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for just being good and being God. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Father God, for giving us another chance, Father God, to praise and honor your holy name. We pray, Father God, that you continue to bless us today. Let's, let us hear from you, Father God. Speak to us through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. He is the wonderful child. Thank you again for joining us here for Bible study on a Wednesday night at 7.15 p.m. Central Time. Tonight we'll be looking at Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. 
We'll begin at verse number four and end at verse number seven. In the New Testament, the book is St. Luke chapter two, verses four through seven. God has given us a, another chance, another opportunity to come before him and honor his name. And we're glad about it. Thank God for this season. Amen. Thank God for this season of recognizing who Jesus is. We ought not wait to this season to recognize him, for he is good and he is God and he is the son of God annually, weekly, hourly, secondly, all the time he is good and he is God. So we look to, to uh, look at who Jesus is on tonight and make sure that we are reminded that this season is about Jesus and Jesus alone, Jesus and Jesus alone. Let's look at Luke chapter 2, verses 4 through, through 7. When you discover it, you will find that Joseph is one of the key characters here. It's built around Jesus, but Joseph plays a major role. The reason why Joseph plays a major role is because Joseph, Joseph is of the house of David. He is of the lineage of David. And the Bible teaches that David will be sitting on the throne and the king himself would sit there. And somebody from the house of David will continually sit on the throne. Such it is with Jesus. If you remember, your Bible teaches that, <clears throat> that when Jesus was being born, King Herod was in charge. He was in control. And King Herod was concerned about another king being influenced or another king having influence over the country. So King Herod was so insecure that when Jesus was about to be born, King Herod had babies killed in order to kill Jesus. He had babies in order to wipe out Jesus. So Jesus is about to be born as we look in, in Luke chapter 2. And we find that Joseph is given the opportunity to go and be registered. He was given the opportunity to go and be a part of the census. It wasn't like the census that we take in the 21st century. In the first century and before, what men would have to do is go to their town of their ancestors their town of their ancestors, the place of their ancestors, they would have to go back home to be included in the census. Nowadays, when the census is taken, we are, the census is taken by those of us who are living in Houston, it is taken of us in Houston. But this census was taken by, based on going back home and having the census taken. So Joseph being obedient to the law, he went back home and the Bible teaches that when he, Joseph went back from Galilee out of Nazareth into Judah to a city, to the city of David, which is Bethlehem. So the important fact here is the purpose. The purpose for Joseph to go home was to be included in the census. The purpose was to be included in the count. Let me tell you, we need to be included today. We need to be accounted for and we need to be accountable. So Joseph goes back. The Bible says he went up from Galilee, living in Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth. He moves from Galilee, uh, in which is the city of Nazareth. And he moves, meaning he's traveling, he's traveling to Judah, the city of David. In Judah, the, to the city of David, and this city is Bethlehem. So Bethlehem is located in Judah. That's why when you hear uh, Bible scholars talking about it, they will talk about uh, Bethlehem of Judea. Bethlehem of Judah. Bethlehem of Judea, meaning that Bethlehem is located in Judea. So he, he leaves from Galilee, leaves from Nazareth, 
into Judea to the city of David. This city of David is Bethlehem. And as we do our research, we look at the Old Testament prophet Micah. Micah says, Micah says in chapter 5, verse number 2, that the, the king will be born in the city of Bethlehem, in the city of David, which is located in Judea. So he says, he says, Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judah, Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Look at the purpose. Because he was of the house and lineage of David. He was at the house and lineage of David. And because he was in the house of lineage of David, we also know that the Bible predicts that Jesus the Messiah would come from the lineage of David. He would come through Joseph. It is important to note here that they didn't call Joseph his stepdaddy. They didn't call Joseph his stepfather. Jesus is tied into David through Joseph. So those of us who have parents are tied into our ancestors by way of those parents. And in this case, his earthly father, not his stepfather, his earthly father is Joseph. Jesus' earthly father is Joseph. And the Bible does not call him a stepdaddy. So we ought not call people stepdaddies. We may have a bonus dad. We may have a bonus mom, but not a stepdad. So the Bible says that he is of the lineage of David. He is leaving Galilee, leaving Nazareth to go be counted, to go and register, verse number five, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife. The word betrothed simply means engaged. Betrothed means espoused to. This word betrothed means that they were connected. During those days, parents had the right to choose who you marry. <laughs> so they were prepared to be married. They were betrothed. They were engaged together. So he takes his wife, his betrothed wife with him, his wife to be with him. And his wife to be, Mary, was with child. Look at what the text says. It says his betrothed wife who was with child. She was pregnant. She had been impregnated by the Holy Spirit. God is Jesus' Father. God is Jesus' Father. God, the Holy Spirit, impregnates Mary. The Bible teaches that she had not been with a man, but she is pregnant. When we look at other texts in the Bible, in the New Testament, we find out that that bothered Joseph. You haven't been with me. You're pregnant. How did you get pregnant? It's not mine, but you're pregnant. Joseph goes to sleep with the purpose in mind of getting rid of Mary. He didn't want to disrespect her. He didn't want to accuse her. He didn't want to demean her. So he went to sleep praying and talking to the Lord about how to get rid of Mary. The Bible says, as he slept, the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said to him in, in, in layman's turn, she has not been with another man. She is with child, but she has not been with another man. Now, when you look at the brothers today and she is with child and you haven't been with her, that's a problem. Such it was with, with Joseph, it was a problem. But the Holy Spirit spoke to him. The angel of the Lord spoke to him. God spoke to him and said, don't get rid of her. She is with child. It's not yours. But this is a thing that is done through God. She is carrying the Messiah. She is carrying the God child. She is carrying Jesus, the Christ. 
Emmanuel. So Joseph kept Mary. They made the trip together, about a three-day journey. They made, a tri made the trip together to register to be, a be accounted and counted for. They made the trip together. Some would say, well, if they weren't married, why did they make the trip together? So they are, they are making the trip. They are to be registered. The first point is the purpose. The purpose is to register. The next point is the place. The place is the place of Bethlehem, as it was prophesied. It is the place of Bethlehem. The next point is the period. God has perfect timing. The place, the town of Bethlehem. The period, the time that it was set apart for Jesus to be born. They knew that the baby was to be born on this trip. They knew that the baby was to be born and God has perfect timing. And just because things don't go our way, we have to understand that the God we serve has perfect timing. He knows the right period. He knows the right time. And check this out. Once they get there, there's no room at a public inn. There's no place for Mary to lay her head. There's no place for Joseph to relax and get rest. There is no place for the king of kings to be born. There's no place for Jesus to be born. It says yesterday that even when God have the perfect period, even when God has perfect timing, things may go like we don't want them to go. Verse number six, so it was that while they were there, look at God's timing, look at this perfect period. While they were there, the days of Mary's pregnancy was complete. It says, so it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. It was done. Her time of being pregnant was over while they were there. Look at God's timing. Look at God's period. Look at the perfect timing that God has. Even in our situations, God has perfect timing. While they were there, she, it became the time for her to deliver. It became the time that her pregnancy was completed. Verse 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son. Her firstborn son. It is interesting to note. Every time this year, people talk about Jesus being the baby. But the fact of the matter is, Jesus was a baby, but he was not Mary's last baby. He was not Mary's last child. Matter of fact, it was her firstborn. The text says, and she brought forth her firstborn son. So number one, it was not her only child. Number two, it was not her only son. Number three, he was the firstborn son of Mary and the firstborn son of Joseph. Not his stepdad, but his, his not his biological dad, not his stepdad, but his earthly father and wrapped him in swaddling cloth. They wrapped Jesus in swaddling cloth, which is strips of cloth. Strips may have been strips of, of old clothing, strips of cloth. They wrapped him in swaddling cloth. It is not unusual for parents to wrap a child up in a sheet, up in cloth, to make sure that their legs and their arms are straight to make sure that they don't hurt themselves. But Jesus didn't even have a good onesie. <laughs> he didn't even have good clothes. He was wrapped in strips of clothes, swaddling cloth. He was wrapped. Jesus was not born in royalty. 
even though Jesus is raw. He was born, let's look further, and they wrapped him in swaddling cloth, they laid him in a manger. In all our plays these days, in all of our performances, in all of our demonstrations, we paint this beautiful picture of this manger. We sing these very Christian songs of this child laid in a manger. But the manger was a trough. It was a container by which animals fed from. He wasn't laid in a bed. He, he, didn't, he didn't have Sealy Pasipiti. He, he didn't have memory foam. He was laid in a manger. The message to us today is the fact that Jesus the Christ wasn't born into comfort, wasn't laid into comfort. He endured even as a baby. How much more can we endure? If, if comfort is not right, some of us can't stand it. If situations don't line up like we like it, we just can't handle it. But here it is, the savior of the world, coming into the world, being born. Theologians believe that he was born in a, a stable, and some believe he was born in a cave. Wasn't born in the women's hospital, wasn't born at MD Anderson, nor was he, he born in Herman Memorial. He wasn't born in a hospital. He wasn't even born in the, in, the, in the bathtub. He was born in a cave, born in a stable, born around animals, laid in a manger. They laid him in a hog trough because there was no room for them in the inn. There was no room for the Christ child to be born. There was no room for the Jesus, the Christ, who would save the entire world. There was no room for him. There was no room for the savior of the world who will wipe away the sins of the world to be born. There was absolutely no room. So we have the purpose. The purpose is to go and, and, and be registered. But the real purpose is to save mankind from themselves, save mankind from the world in which we live in, to save mankind from their sins. The real purpose of Jesus' birth was to save mankind. Then we have the place. The place is the place that was prophesied that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem of Judea. We have the period. The period is, is perfect because... He was born at a time when, when there was no crowds around him and they didn't have baby showers as we do today. But it was a perfect period, perfect timing. God has perfect timing. Then I say to you today, not only was it the purpose, not only was it the, the place, not only was it the period, it was also the person. The person who had no room, the person who had no place to be born, that person is Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus. The songwriter that Sister Davis, the songwriter and Sister Davis just shared with us, his name is Jesus. He is the son of God that takes away the sins of the world. He's the son of God that was born in order to die for us. The person of Jesus Christ. He is the visible image of the invisible God, the person of Jesus Christ. We don't worship a movement. We worship a person. His name is Jesus. He gave his life for all of us. And finally, not only do we focus on the purpose of mankind being saved, not only do we focus on the place that wherever you are in your life, this place where you are in your life, the, the God that we serve can save you through Jesus Christ. Not only do we focus on the period, the period in your life. Some people are going through some tough times right now. And the periods in their lives does not seem to be perfect. But God has perfect timing. Focus on the person. When we focus on the person of Jesus Christ, we can see good in the midst of bad. And finally, I say to you, there's a privilege. The privilege is right now, the privilege is tonight, 
and the privilege is to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The same Jesus that was born in Bethlehem of Judea, the same Jesus that walked these shores, the same Jesus that, that healed mankind, the same Jesus that, that raised men from the dead, the same Jesus that, that caused men to see that were blind, Cause a woman to get unbent. The same Jesus that went about doing good. It is a privilege to get to know him. And the only way you can get to know him. Is remember that this season. Is about the person of Jesus Christ. And Jesus gives us the privilege. To get to know him. And if we get to know him. We can go to that place. Where God is looking forward to welcoming us welcoming us home. It's a place called heaven. We have the privilege today. We have the privilege tonight. We have the privilege this season to get to know Jesus. And if you're going to know Jesus, you must confess that he is the son of God. If you're going to know Jesus, you guys confess that Jesus the Christ, even though we have a pretty story of his birth, you have to understand, not only did he, he live, not only was he born, not only do he, did he go about doing good, but he died on Calvary. And when he died on Calvary, he gave us the privilege of getting to know him and getting to know God. He died on Calvary. They laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. Will you receive him today? Will you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Don't allow these commercial things around you to distract you from Jesus. We have pretty lights that we see. We have gifts giving that we're doing. We have people that decorate the trees. We have people who are excited that give away gifts that they never have given away all year long. But don't let those things distract you. We visit families during this time. We spend our time one with the other. We eat a lot of food. But don't let that distract you from the privilege of getting to know Jesus. The Jesus that died on Calvary. The Jesus that rose early that third day morning. You ought to invite him into your life. You won't be sad about it if you do. Trust him. Trust him to get you through this season. It's not about the turkeys and we, we enjoy eating. Not about the ham that we enjoy. It's not even about the fellowship one to the other. But it's about the fellowship we have with God through Jesus Christ. Wouldn't you like to know him? The Jesus that died for you and gave his life for you. The door of the church is open. Why don't you try him? Why don't you recognize this season is a season that Jesus the Christ is born so you can be born again by trusting his death, burial, and resurrection. If this is you and you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, will you just bow your head with me and invite Jesus into your life? Just repeat this simple prayer and Ask Christ to come into your life. He will change you. He will make you different. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose again. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you honestly prayed this prayer, inviting Jesus into your life, believing the story of his death, burial, and resurrection, we believe that you are born again. We believe that when you leave earth, you're on your way to heaven. And those of us who are saved and already saved and been saved, let's invite Jesus Christ to take control of our lives. 
that he can not only be our Savior, but be our Lord. Let's remember to focus on the real purpose. The purpose is not to be counted. The purpose is that Jesus will give us a new walk in life. That Jesus will do things that we can't do for ourselves. That Jesus will set us straight on the straight and narrow. That Jesus will take our hearts and our minds to a brand new place. That Jesus will intervene in this period that we go through even today. That Jesus Christ, the person of Jesus, will be revealed to us day by day by day. Because we have the privilege. And the privilege is to grow stronger in Jesus the Christ. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of this service. Please join us every Wednesday at 7 15 every Wednesday for Bible study. Join us on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for Sunday school. And then join us at 10.30 a.m. for worship service. If you want to stop by and be a part of our services, please come visit us at the New Beginning Church, 4251 Shiremai Road, Houston, Texas. That's 4251 Shiremai Road, Houston, Texas. 77048 USA. We'll be glad to have you. You'll be glad that you have come. Thank you so much for being a part. It is now offering time. If you want to give to God through the New Beginning Church, you can do so electronically. You can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting. Dot Jesus at yahoo.com is our Zelle account. If you want to mail in your gifts, you can do so by mailing it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77048. 77459. That's P.O. Box 503. Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Again, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. Please give, please uh, like and share the video. And remember that Jesus is the reason for this season. And we're just so glad you joined us here tonight. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for every gift. We thank you for every giver. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that Jesus is the reason for this season. God, we thank you, Father God, that we know the real purpose. The purpose of this season, the purpose of our lives is to get to know God. And we can only get to know him through Jesus Christ. Lord, wherever we are, in what place, what place in our heart, whatever place in our physical location, Lord, we ask you to be God in the presence. Lord, whatever period we're going through, whatever situation, whatever time period, whatever we're going through and whatever is coming upon us, Lord, we believe that you have perfect timing. We believe, Father God, that you are able to keep us and deliver us in the midst of this time period. And Lord, we realize that we have a treasure in the person of Jesus Christ. Lord, we treasure him. He can do what we can't do. Lord, we ask you to bless every person that our faith will remain strong, that we will have our hope in the person of Jesus Christ, that we will realize that Jesus Christ is our treasure and the person of Jesus Christ is the one who can keep us and move us forward. And Lord, we thank you for the privilege. Lord, it's an honor, it's a privilege. It's a great opportunity just to be your child. Lord, we consider it a privilege to know Jesus. It's a privilege to obey the Holy Spirit. And it's a privilege to have you, God, as our Heavenly Father. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We honor you. Lord, we ask you to bless us now as we move forward through this season. Keep our youth and our young people. Keep our seniors. Keep our young adults. Bless us, Father God, that we will be safe that we will return 
to our destinations and leave in, in safety and reach our destination safely and return home safely. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to bless the Galvan family. We look forward, Father God, to watching them grow in spirit and in mind and in heart, even as they lay to rest their loved one. Lord, we ask you to build up our church, that our church would be a beacon light for others to see. Lord, we pray, Father God, that our attitudes will be adjusted through the Holy Spirit, that our lifestyles will be reined in, that we will follow and obey the Holy Spirit. Bless us, Father God, that we will always look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith, that our faith will not waver, but we will always look to you and depend on you. Lord, we ask you to amaze us, amaze the doctors, amaze those who look upon us. Father God, show yourself mighty. For your word says, Lord, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole world, looking for somebody that he can show himself mighty through. Lord, show yourself mighty through us. Bless those who are less fortunate than we are. Bless those who don't have. And bless those of us who do have, that we would not be selfish, that we would be considerate and that we will show our love one for the other. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank you so much for joining us. Please come and visit with us on a regular basis, we look forward to sharing Jesus Christ with you every Wednesday and every Sunday. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.